Hello everyone, Antibody here, bringing you another interview. This time I'm going to be talking with Zork, a core team member, and known most recently for his work on vehicles. Hello Zork. So, let's get right to it. First things first, tell me about your role in the project. What are the uh, things you, you work on? Well, I guess I'm a bit like the Xenotic Handyman. The things I do range from 2D texture work to maps and models and game code. And there is the core team bit, which is pretty much just administrative and organizational stuff. So, how did you become involved? For how long? I found out about Dark Places and by association Nexus while looking for some game engine to use for a crazy game idea I had. More or less days after Nexus 1 was released, I found its forums and started getting involved. At first with custom maps and then later with some small mods and other code contributions. And uh, the rest, as we say, is history. So, wow. You got involved all the way back at Nexus 1.0. So what's kept you involved? Right from the start, I got a lot of help from the community on how things worked and so on. Without this, I would never have had the patience to acquire the knowledge I have of Dark Places today. So the friendly community atmosphere is the largest reason I stuck around. That and no doubt a severe lack of sanity. So tell me about your favorite game mode in Xenotic. Which one is it that you find yourself enjoying the most, and why is that? Hard to say. I don't think I have an exclusive favorite at the moment. I did play CTF very much for a period, more or less exclusively. Now I find myself playing deathmatch mainly with the odd duel and pick up CTF every now and then. I really like team deathmatch. Unfortunately, just about no one plays this mode outside pickup games, and even there, almost no one do. A new freestag is a mode I'm growing quite fond of. For those who don't know it, it's essentially Last Man Standing and Team Deathmatch baked together with some twists. Another underplayed and quite original mode I quite like is Key Hunt. What else are you working on right now? Why do you think it's important? I'm working almost exclusively with getting vehicles ready for use in Sonotic. As this is a spare time hobby thing for me, I tend not to think about things in terms of what's more important, but rather what interests me at the moment. Of course, if there's a severe bug in some part, that takes precedence, given it's something I can do anything about. But yeah, it needs to be more fun than chores, or it's not a good hobby. Yeah, I'm definitely with you on that one. As soon as something starts to become a chore, I'll, I'll put it down and, and I usually won't pick it up again. Um, so, Xenotic is, is, uh, it runs under the Dark Places engine, which is, a, which is a Quake 1 engine modification. And Quake 1 is rather old, so tell me why you think Dark Places imp is important in 2011. So, what kind of sets it apart, and why is it still active despite being so old? Same reason any other engine that's in use are, because it's in use. What does set Dark Places apart from other GPL solutions in the same field is completeness, I guess. By that I don't mean it's got the most complete render or most complete networking implementation, but it's got all the major things from a game engine you would need to make a game. Other GPL solutions, like Light Feather, have better render capabilities, but it's not a ready-to-go game engine. So you just mentioned a little bit about Dark Place's features. Are there any features that are lacking that you'd most want to see that aren't there today? Um, players? As far as game features go, we already have more than plenty. I can't say I really miss anything major at the moment. There's always room for improvement, of course, but Xenotic already has gameplay elements spawning a wider range of gameplay than any other game I know of. Yes, yes, we'd love to see some more players. For those of you out there listening, uh, 
Download Zonotic. Give it a try. It's a good game. I promise you. So, so Zork, what motivated you to create your own balance with Samuel? What do you think is left to be done in that in that area in the in the weapon balance area? First off, I'd like to make it clear that Samuel's current balance has little to do with me. For assorted reasons, it became his thing rather than a cooperation between me and him. The reason I felt a new balance was necessary is it's quite simple. I was not happy with the gameplay of uh, 0.1. It threw away too much of what was good about Nexus and introduced elements I find rather bad, like blocking weapon switch during rifle refire, less, ex less effective weapon combinations, and so on. So let's talk about the community. What types of resources do you think the community most needs right now? Anything and everything. If I have to rank it, I would say a decent animator, or 10, would be the one thing that would make the most difference to the game right now. Okay. Tell me about your non-coding activity. Have you been a part of any clans? What's your history there? As I hinted before, when I first got involved, I did so in mapping, something I kept on doing since, to various degrees. Starting with the TZNX01 and the latest being Globeplant. In between, there has been too many maps to go over them all, so I'll pick some I find notable. For uh, many of my maps, I create custom context, like textures and models and so forth. My most notable effort here was with Temple of Eternal Light a map I did for a Nexus mapping competition. The map used exclusively new contact, so much in fact that much of it ended up never being used in the final map. Another notable map was the first Broken World. It was the first or one of the first maps to be built mainly from models rather than brushwork. Doing it this way meant exposing and subsequently fixing many bugs related to model-based maps. As for the clan part, I'm a member and co-founder of Mon, Monks of Nexus. We are quite likely the oldest still active clan from Nexus days, and probably one of the most mixed range members in terms of age, uh, gender and geography. As far as my role on the forums go, I'm glad to say I'm no longer much involved in the administrative part, which for me means more time and energy for development. Okay. What advice do you have for the people new to the game who may not have been involved in Nexius before and are coming to Xenotic for the first time? Stop moving so I can hit you! Uh, wait, maybe it's the other way around. Yeah, get a grip on how the movement works. Xenotic is even more movement focused than Nexius was, so that's where I re recommend to start. The best aiming skills in the world won't help you if you're already dead or your enemy has gone out of sight. Um, get into pickup games. Even if you're not aiming to go competitive play in the end, the high skill level in these games will mean that your own learning curve gets accelerated. Uh, participate in the forums and join the IRC channels. The community has always been the strongest point of Nexus and by extension now Xenotic. Solid advice there. Now how about advice for seasoned Nexius players? So people who have experienced the old version of the game and all of its differences when compared with Zenotic, what advice would you have for those players? Give it some time. Actually play it. Xenotic is a descendant of Nexius. It's not a clone. Man, many things are different and that will be upsetting at first. Nobody likes a change to something they know. but. No one is doing these changes to be evil, so give it some time and try it out. Alright, great stuff, Zork. Okay, folks, that concludes our interview for this time. Uh, I'd like to thank Zork for participating, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Stay tuned to the IRC channels and the forums on Zonotic.org for more information. And I'm Antibody. Thanks again.